I don't know, like, it's in Coach Dog. I still know what he looks like. I've been here in that community like, for two years. And like, what do you say? Oh, like, someone with a good, like, brown hair. Yeah. Can you tell them I literally got my name? It's like, hey. They look so bad. No, they are quite short. Oh, My name is we basically went through uh, the notes for 9.3, which is uh, finding arc lengths uh, in parametric form. So, uh, So the homework for tonight is just uh, finishing up 9.3. Uh, I think we did one and we did one and two yesterday, and really you're just applying the rules, uh, finding your x prime, your y prime, inserting into the integral notation your a and b or t values, and then you're just working your way through um, finding the antiderivative, doing the depth integral, and that will be your arc length um, of a curve that is in parametric form. So. Uh, Maybe, oh, so let's come back to uh, to these classroom problems after I go through the notes for because I'm I'm kind of uh, one day ahead with the notes because I want to get to uh, polar graphs a little earlier um, and I really feel like you know it's once you know what the rule is and you're just applying it with derivative integrals uh, it's not really any new concept per se uh, so uh, let's go to page 19. And uh, we're going to talk about vectors, but it's going to feel very familiar uh, with what we've been doing um, with parametrics. So, um, we'll just walk through uh, the notes here. So, page 19. Okay, so vector basics. Uh, vectors have magnitude and direction. Um, so magnitude is referring to length uh, and direction. So uh, vectors can be represented by directed line segments. So uh, we can have a length with an, an arrow to indicate where uh, that vector is pointing. Vectors are equal if they have the same direction and the same magnitude. And magnitude is designated by these vertical bars of V. So, um, okay. Ver uh, vectors have horizontal and vertical components, just like what we saw with um, parametric. And then the component form of a vector is with these angular uh, brackets here. So, bracket X, Y. So number one uh, says find the component form and magnitude of a vector that has an initial point one two and terminal point by four. 
So anytime I want to take order pair and get it into uh, component form for vectors, I'm going to be taking my x of two minus x of one. So my uh, final x minus my initial x and then y sub two minus y sub one. And then your initial point is your x one, y one. Your terminal point is your x two, y two. So in this case, um, my x2 minus x1 will just be um, 5 minus 1. And then my y2 minus y1 is just going to be 4 minus 2. And my component form for my vector will be 4, 2. And then once you're in component form, um, you can just think of it as, OK, if I want to find the magnitude, I should have to do basically looking at the distance. So Pythagorean theorem or distance formula, just the square root of a squared plus b squared. So vector value functions, r of t equals bracket f of t, g of t, where f and g are component functions with parameter t. So very similar to parametric equations. All right, let's look at um, some of these uh, properties here. These properties I think are um, yeah. So these properties uh, reflect rules that we already know. If I have um, derivative, I want to find the derivative of a coefficient times a variable. That coefficient stays. The I'm just taking the derivative of my variable expression. If I have r of t times s of t then this is product rule. If I have R of T plus or minus S of T, then I can treat the derivative separately with a plus or minus in between. And if I have a function within a function, then there's chain rule. Okay, so I have my R of T uh, vector that's in component form. If I want to find R prime, then it's really just X components derivative, Y components derivative, and that's it. So what's the derivative of 2T squared plus 4T plus 1? 14 plus 1. Right. And then 3TQ minus 4T. 9T squared minus 4. Yeah, so. OK, number two, R of T is TQ plus five. Uh, says find the derivative of R of two T. So why don't we build R of two T first and then we can find the derivative. So R of two T, just replace every T with two T. Do some cleanup here. And now derivative. OK, 
Okay, so a lot of what we're seeing or what we're going to do with vectors will feel a lot like parametric. So it says the path of a particle moving along a path in the xy plane is given by a vector value function f of t. Find the slope of the path of the particle at t equals 3 pi over 4. So if I want to find the slope, I can find the derivative to get to the derivative. This is basically my y prime. This is my x prime. This is my x and y component. dy dt is y. Uh, so this is my x component. That's my y component. What will dy dt be? With the oh, sign turn into, okay. yeah, cosine of t. dx dt would be what? Okay, we have our derivative. Involve the 3 pi over 4, and then we can get to the exact slope. Unit circle values, we know cosine, that's in the pi over four family. Cosine of pi over four is root two over two, but this is in the second quadrant. Cosine will be negative. Then six pi over four, same thing as three pi over two. Dividing by a fraction, the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So here's our slope. Okay, integrals of vector value function is exactly as what you would expect. You will take the antiderivative of your x and y components separately. And if they give you an order pair, you can solve for that plus c and put it back into place. So this is the second part of 9.5. So if my Vector is R of T that is um, in component form as F of T and G of T. Then if I want to find the antiderivative of R of T, I can take the antiderivative of my component form. And then each, I just take the appropriate integral rule separately. Each will produce a plus C. And um, if they give us order pair to work with, we can solve for the C's individually and then update our, our antiderivative with the with the um, full value. Okay, so here's number one. Uh, if I want to find R of T, find R of T if R prime is given in component form and R of zero is two zero. So we're going to ignore that two zero a little bit later. That will help us out when eventually we need to solve for C, but let's set up our, our two components. We know that we want to find the antiderivative of both of those um, terms in component form. 
and eventually make our way up to x and y. So right now, x prime is sitting at 4e to the 2t. y prime is sitting at 2e to the t. So I know that if I take the antiderivative of 4e to the 2t, that will bring me up to the x level. But if I want to take the antiderivative, what's involved here? Yeah, u substitution. Ultimately, we want to turn this into e to the u because we know e to the u is just e to the u, right? So my u value is 2t. Solve for dt, dt is du over 2. We know that a 1 half is going to come out of that u substitution. So replace the pieces one by one in terms of u. So we have 4e to the u times du over 2. What cancels out or what reduces? Yeah, 4 and 2, I'm left with 2 in front. The integral of 2 e to the u is just e to the u. You have to show my u sub first. You don't have to show your, yeah. You don't have to show your u sub. If you, if you know what's going to happen, great. Um, I just want to show you all the steps in case you need to see it. OK, so uh, this is my indefinite integral. So I have 2 e to the u. Replace the u back in terms of t. So 2 e to the t plus c. I did plus c sub 1 because I know that there's going to be a plus c on the y side as well. So I'm going to take my time and solve for c here. So I know that r of 0 is equal to 2. So I know 0 represents time. 2 is my x value. I want to uh, use those to help me solve for c. So replace x with what? 2 and replace t with 0. zero okay? And then solve for x. So 2 is equal to 2e to the 0 plus c sub 1. e to the 0 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. So my, z my c is 0. So my integral will just be x 2e to the 2t plus 0. Or I can just drop out, drop that plus c. Okay, see if you can find y applying the same process, taking the antiderivative of the y component. Okay, so on the y side, uh, integral of 2e to the t is just 2e to the t plus c sub 2. Use the order pair that's provided. t is 0 when y is 0. c sub 2 equals negative 2, and then update your c sub 2 with negative 2. And now we can put all of our pieces back into component form. r of t is 2e to the 2t. And then y component 2e to the t minus 2. Doesn't give a condition, I can just leave it as plus c, right? That's right. If it doesn't give you a condition, you can leave it as plus c. Okay, try number two. Let me just, um, let's just uh, remind ourselves our rules here. What's the anti, what's the integral rule of secant squared? Tangent. You guys recognize this one? What's the integral rule of R one over yeah, yeah. R tangent? Yeah. Okay, try that. Yeah, so number two, they don't give you order pair conditions, so you have to leave your plus C sub one and plus C sub two.
Do you have to label the seeds like C1 and C2 like we did in the problem? Or can we just leave it as uh, both as C? Um, just to differentiate between them. So you can do plus C and plus K. I'm just going to let it be C sub 1 and C sub 2. Yeah, yeah. But if you did like C sub X and C sub Y, you can do that. Um, I haven't seen that notation before, so I would say either do plus C and plus K or C sub 1, C sub 2. Okay, try number three. Just like how, how we handled one and two, this is now definite integral. So just put this up into two problems. Do the integral from negative one to one of t cubed. You're going to get a number out of it. And then do the integral from negative one to one of t to the one third. You get a number out of it. And then because ultimately all your variables will go away, uh, your answer will just it be a component form, but then these two will be both numbers, numeric values. Right. Uh, I, I right. It's right. So I'm not changing. I, I'm a day ahead in notes, but I'm not moving the homework assignments. That's right. Yeah. Tomorrow's homework would be A and B. Um, for nine point oh nine point five. Maybe. So you're going to go up to page 26. But tonight you're just going to do. Uh huh. Yeah, you'll just do 9.3 and the 9.2 AP practice. I just want to get through enough of the notes where you feel like, OK, like you know how to tackle these problems. You know, even if I didn't give you these notes and and you were trying these problems on your own, this is probably what you would do, right? You would take the individual components and apply whatever integral rules that you see and 
So this should feel very intuitive. You you kind of you already know how to do all this. It's just you know separating the component form and having to work on them individually. Okay, so uh, with the remainder of class, I'd like for us to just see if we can finish some of the, the homework that I'm going to assign you, and I think you can get through a lot of it today. So on page 17 is the arc length notes that we, or the classwork for arc length for 9.3, so we can start there. And just chip away at your homework so that you don't do as much tonight. So tonight uh, or for tomorrow, I'll be checking your 9.3 classwork problems as well as your uh, 9.2 AP practice. And I'll put the solutions uh, one at a time on the board once you guys have a chance to try. That's right, AP practice from 9.2. So yeah, so you have to kind of, uh, let me see what page is that. Yeah, page 12 through 14. So tomorrow I'll check pages 12 through 18. I'll we'll go ahead and start on page 17 first. <clears throat> the arc length um, formula at the top so you can have easy access to it. We made it. So, 
Yes, that's right. Yep. Yeah. So all of 9.3 practice. So page 12 through 18. Guys, yeah, so for number two, it feels a little strange with that h square plus b square, but remember, our square of h square plus b square is just some coefficient, just some number. It's not going to impact is how <laughs> the only variable is t, so you could value yeah, p squared over two. And just keep whatever coefficient in the mirror. No, it's fortunate that we're right. Um, so it's like it's a U problem. Oh, it's a U just yeah. Is it like uh, integration by parts? No, it's just you know. So you end up with the thing which is like two p times the square root of four plus p squared. Yeah, I factored it. Yeah, so now that's a U step, right? Four plus p squared the U. Oh, and then they eventually cancel out.
this like it doesn't make any intentional right to do that. Uh, this plus the B20. Okay, so you. You can take a, a, a back up and see if and see it. Once it's a multiplication problem, then you can look to see if you can pull it out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, so tomorrow I'm going to check pages 12 through 18. Um, and we'll finish up with uh, particle motion. And then maybe we can even start um, with polygraphs tomorrow. But if not, we still have a full mm -hmm. class period Thursday. We will get started with polygraphs. So we can kind of let that sink in and not have to rush through um, all the polar stuff. I want to rush through all the easy stuff so we can get to spend more time on, on the things that we haven't seen as much before. All right, read your phones. over uh, the yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then you that. Okay. And then you put that on the and then Another like right on the track you can scan spot and you can utilize the and then you just pick the right And then you buy it. It's not the No, but it's more. It should see. It was the most important. Yeah, but maybe that. You can see 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 that. You can see